Corbin Security. <laughs> 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 No umbrella today. Hi. How are you? You okay? You ready? Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here uh, this evening as Waterbury Public Schools announces that. Uh, effective tomorrow, Tuesday, November 17th, we will be going to virtual learning for all of our students. Um, we have done this out of an abundance of caution as we have seen COVID positive cases rise in Waterbury, uh, both the city as well as in our school system. And in keeping with our mission to assure that our students and our staff are safe and well and healthy. Uh, we have decided to go virtual uh, now instead of waiting until after Thanksgiving as we originally planned. This will mean for our staff that our staff will be in person because all of the materials, all of the equipment and the tools for delivery of teaching and learning are available in the schools, but our students will be learning virtually. We will continue this model until after the Dr. Martin Luther King holiday in January. Uh, as always, we're going to continue to monitor the situation with COVID positive. And uh, as we make decisions, we will be in constant contact with the Department of Health, as well as other agencies across the state and in the city as we continue to make decisions that are in the best interest of our students. Thank you very much. Sam, how are you going to track uh, participation in school by students and truancy? Uh, we will continue to track attendance and truancy in the same manner that we do now. Our students will be logging on at the same time every morning, just like we've done in our hybrid model. And so the beginning of instruction is the same when we go to the virtual model. So students are expected to log in at that time. Our teachers will be on at that time. We'll continue with instruction uh, in, in live. And that is our teachers will be delivering instruction. So we expect our students to log on and to be participating uh, just like they would if they were all in person. What do you recruit your staff, your IT staff, so if somebody has a problem, somebody can't get out, somebody has a problem hooking up? Yes, just as we continue to deploy our IT staff, they will continue to do so. Uh, we also have staff at school that can assist if there's on a minor glitch there, but our IT department will continue to assist and continue to monitor as uh, students may have questions or if they have issues with the computer so that we can make certain that while all of our students in Waterbury Public Schools who have asked for and need a computer have one, we will continue. at night you're calling it for tomorrow it, it seems kind of an emergency but is it more you said out of abundance of caution or just seen the numbers come up so quickly we've seen the numbers rise especially since uh, we just did this a couple of days ago to announce that we were going to go virtual after uh, after thanksgiving so yes we've seen the numbers rise over the weekend and we have uh, been very vigilant in observing what those numbers could mean in terms of our students in school and their attendance, but very importantly, what that does to our staff as well. In terms of those rising numbers, what was the challenge of that environment? Trying to keep the classes going? What, what, what was the struggle there? I think because uh, as you see numbers that are rising in COVID positive, uh, when you apply the contact tracing, you find that there were various points of contact which made it a challenge to be able to consistently know how many people were actually in close contact with an individual. Uh, we saw that as we saw perhaps uh, COVID positive in a parent, but they may have more than one child in the school system. And, and so it might have affected more than one school. And then when you looked at the contact tracing and found out that this might have affected more students within a classroom or a grade level, uh, depending on how the students were cohorted, it became increasingly a challenge. And we wanted to make certain that we were going to ensure the safety um, because they were becoming more and more complex. So, before the announcement last week, the FDA had said that there have been numbers of students, numbers of staff that were 
market uh, day after day. I was just wondering, what was different about this weekend? You know, why did this fall? Mike, what we saw increasing over the weekend, especially on Sunday, was just a, 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 a what I would call a, a very high rise in the number of COVID positive cases that were reported Sunday. And then we continued to monitor that because not only were there COVID positive cases reported and we saw a rise there, but we also saw the influence that an individual could have had on multiple people uh, that became increasingly complex. Is that number uh, I believe so. Okay. Has there been any indication that there's been transmission inside the schools, or is there still no indication of transmission inside the schools? Uh, I'm not sure if I understood your question, but if you're asking if we believe the transition. There's been transmission of the virus from person to person inside the school building. I believe that based on what we have seen, that transmission is occurring as people are becoming more and more social in their personal lives outside of school. I, in order to answer absolutely accurately, I would repeat that I believe that we're seeing that rise as people are becoming uh, just a little bit more uh, lenient, perhaps in how and in the groups that they're gathering with outside of school, uh, maybe getting a little bit comfortable without masks and uh, maybe uh, going a little bit more social than they should. And of course, having having a pandemic, you're, you're not really sure how you actually contract COVID-19. But I believe that it is definitely something that's happening as a result of socialization, not just something that's happening within the school system. But it affects the school system. It, it affects the school system. Uh, but in the past, you, you know, the administration has said that they see no evidence of transmission inside the schools. Does that still hold true? I don't believe anybody can say where exactly people are contracting COVID positive. I can only tell you what I've observed as superintendent is that when people are becoming more and more social in their social lives and away from school, that it affects what happens within the school. That's what I can say with certainty. How does this affect the trade school? I'm sorry? How does this affect the trade school? Um, I mean, you can virtually train, you can virtually study math. I'm not certain that I understand about the trade schools. Are you talking about yeah, the connections that we have with uh, career tech and, and uh, college pathways? Or you're talking about workforce and people within uh, working within trades? Caner? Okay, I, I can't answer for Caner because Caner is not one of my schools in Waterbury. It, 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 it is not a, a Waterbury public okay. schools. For a superintendent to have to close schools for this, how does that affect your heart? I mean, it's, it's got to be up, isn't it? Yeah, it makes my heart very heavy because we uh, we certainly believe that the best learning environment for our children is a combination of what we have been providing both virtually and in person. Uh, we definitely did not change our minds overnight that the elementary school children, our pre-K-5, our pre-K-8s, and our special needs children and our students that are bilingual benefit when there's um, that in-person learning and an opportunity to engage with the student and uh, teacher in person. Uh, that did not change, so it weighs very heavily on my heart. Uh, what weighs very heavily on my heart is that every day and every hour of the day, I'm constantly aware that I have to make decisions that are going to protect the people, uh, the people who work very tirelessly to make great things happen on behalf of all children, our teachers, our staff, all of our, our staff, our maintainers, our, our food uh, preparation uh, workers, uh, our paraprofessionals, our clerical assistants, our administrative assistants, everyone here in the Chase Building um, uh, my chief operating officer who's behind me here and director of communications here. I mean, we work tirelessly, so it weighs heavily on, on my heart knowing that, um, that we have to make decisions that, that are going to affect all of the children here, um, but it's the right decision to make given the facts that we now have. I'm sorry? What is the, does every school have a computer or some type of tablet and how do you plan on being able to write stuff? Yeah, 
Yes, I would say that Waterbury Public Schools is, is in a good place in terms of how we have distributed computers. So our students have uh, a computer to use. Everyone who has asked for a computer has one. Everyone who uh, needed a voucher to be able to have free internet access, we have issued a voucher for so that high-speed internet is available at home as well. Um, and what we still need to work on is how we're going to design the program for our pre-K students. That is forthcoming um, because we know that with the pre-K student, we certainly do not expect them to be sitting at home with a computer for four hours a day. Uh, so the model that we're designing there is certainly going to be with a computer that we will provide to the family and also a structured learning environment that will be best suited for their learning stock. Can you talk about school preparation? Yes, yeah, so we're still going to provide breakfast and lunch in our schools. We're going to do that as a grab and go, just like we have done uh, last year and just like we did this summer. Uh, and uh, come tomorrow morning, we're going to provide it at all of the sites, just like we've typically done. And then we will continue to provide that uh, until the Thanksgiving holiday. And then we, as the letter that went out just a couple of days ago, we will be providing the lunches and the breakfast at the sites that are indicated. Uh, within the neighborhoods so that they're easily accessible to our families. How confident are you of uh, reopening on the 19th of January? Um, I, I can't tell you today how comfortable I am with that, but I can tell you is that we're going to be monitoring the situation and being in close contact with the Department of Public Health. Uh, and we're going to make certain that we make the best decisions for our students when we get to that point. Uh, what we would like to do and I can say that with, with a lot of confidence. What we would like to do is not only look at what we're going to, uh, to do after on, on January 19th, but what we would like to do in terms of our hybrid model when we do reopen and then gradually increasing the number of students that are going to be in person in the school and eventually getting to the point where we could have a, a resemblance of school with the majority, if not all of our students back learning in person. I think uh, the answers to all of that, whether it's going to be optional or not, is going to depend on the status of where the nation is on COVID-19, uh, where we are in the state of Connecticut, and specifically where we are in the city of Waterbury.